away our sins. There is nothing. The only thing that can wash away our sins is the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout in it. Yes. What can wash away my sin? There's nothing except the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. I tell you what can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. And all precious is a flow that makes the white as snow and I found I know nothing the blood the blood of Jesus there's nothing the only thing is the blood of Jesus oh yes mm -hmm. oh my God I see nothing. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh my, since in this I play nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that. Makes me white as snow, and oh, that I found I know. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, this is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus, and oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No, I defend, I know nothing. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. Nothing. The blood of Jesus. It's only the blood that can shed. It's the only shed blood. Hallelujah. In the name. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Yes, another day. A moment before your presence. Pray the Lord you speak to us. Minister to us. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Somebody once again we bring you greetings. Bring you greetings from God. The Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. It is our prayer. That this year will be your year. A year of glory, a year that the Lord has made, a year that you will testify of the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. But as God told Moses, when you read Exodus chapter 33, God told Moses that yes, I promise my people that I will take them to the promised land. And because Israel continued to sin, God told them that I will go. I will let my angels go with you. 
But I will not go with you. Because I'll go if I go with you, I'll consume you, I'll destroy you. Moses said, If I found favor, then Lord show me. Then God promised my presence. Moses continued to ask God. And God told Moses, There is a place by me. There is a rock. When you stand on the rock, I'll pass by. And that rock is Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister, when you read Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul said that he did not want us to be ignorant that our fathers passed through the, the Red Sea. They had the manna. And the rock that followed them was the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock. The rock on which when you stand, you see the glory of God. Find a place in the Lord. This year, find a place and build a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, our Jesus will come. He's coming. Everything points toward the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, the world get wicked and wicked and wicked. Things, every prophecy of the word of God is coming to pass. Every prophecy. Every prophecy is coming to pass. Yes, to be before the eyes of people. <laughs> we are for the eyes of Christians. Nobody believes it. Nobody. Seeing, they see. By understanding, they cannot understand. Thank God for the children of Issachar. The Bible says the children of Issachar have understanding of the times. And they ought to do. They know what they ought to do. And they did it. My prayer, my brother, my sister, child of God. Many of you hear me. woman of tears. Yeah. He has here the woman. He was all here. Understand it and know what you have to, have to do and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no name on earth in heaven given unto man to be saved except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only Jesus. My brother, my sister, a name that nobody wants to hear. People don't want to hear. When they hear it, they get angry. People get furious. But whether you like it or not, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That is why in the, in the Bible, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. The three were important things in the Bible. Three, without. The first one, when you read the Bible, go and read. He said, without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9 and verse 22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The reason why Jesus Christ came to die. To shed his blood. And destroy the partition that was separating us from our God. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Yes, somebody said, yes, I can wake up in the morning. I can do whatever I want to do. Me tell me sorry. I'm not here. Me pay. Me and I'm here. Be here. You sit down. You sit down. When you drive by cemeteries, you drive. Don't think that that is a museum. It is where human remains are kept. My prayer for you, my brother, my sister, the child of God, for you to understand. Today I want to start a new topic. And I'll come back this year. I'm preaching every preaching is about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll talk about his ministry. The prophecies concerning his ministry. I started preaching about the declaration made by the angels. When, when you read Luke chapter 4. Uh, sorry, Luke chapter 2 and the verse 14. It says, glory to God in the highest. On earth peace. And goodwill to man, an advantage to man. And I was reading a scripture, and somebody wrote something, and it says that uh, the goodwill, they like the new international version, it says peace to people whom God has favored. Even the Chino Christ translating, sir. Chino translating, sir. Asunjema wanya me a favor. Listen to me. God has not favored anybody. God 
<laughs> has given every human being opportunity to accept him. Every human being will be a will be a will be a, a was as you know, God has given us equal opportunity. That is why the Bible says, For he came, he came for his own, but his own receive him not, but as many that receive him, them that believe in his name, those who believe him, God has given you your free will. Jesus is for them that believes. That is why I every day tells you, yes, when you and you when you be when you be at there. Or your woman or Jiri Dino, those that believe in him. My prayer is that you believe in him. My prayer is that you believe in him. Those whose heart are perfect, those who, 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 who deny. The Bible says if anybody will come to the Lord Jesus, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Those who are ready to deny. May the Lord have mercy on us. And may the Lord be gracious unto us as we live and as we, 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 we live for him. He is coming. Our Jesus will come. Today, I want to start a message and I'll come back again. I want to talk about the body. The body. Hallelujah. A living sacrifice. You see, when you hear messages, messages upon messages. One of the areas that many ministers have tend to ignore is talking about the body. The body. The body. The body. Who need Now what you don't have to back and once Your body. Your body, a living sacrifice. That is the title of my message. Your body, a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice unto the Lord. There are many messages when I listen to thousands of sermons on what God has to say about our souls, our mind, and our wills and our emotion. But hardly to use here what the body at times this subject is ignored. But let me tell you one of the things that is important to God is the body. Is the body that God has given to you. Somebody said, human beings, we are made up of the soul, the spirit, and the body. But do you know the soul and the spirit live in the body? Without the body, the soul and the spirit don't have any place to stay. And so God has given us the body. And my prayer is that somebody... You understand the body. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 12. And I'll read verse 2. 1 and 2. Our body. A living sacrifice. The body that God has given to us. My brother, my sister, child of God. That this body does not belong to you. It has been rented unto you. It has been given unto you by God. And one day you will give accounts. One day you will give accounts. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will understand. Romans chapter 12 and the verse 1. Let's hear the word of God. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The body, a living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable will unto the Lord. This is what God through his servant Paul presented to us Christians. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will understand that this body that God has given to you, yes, one day we will die. One day you, we will leave this earth and our bodies will be buried and it will become dust. Yes, the spirit and the soul. My brother, my sister, 
presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will understand that God has a lot to say about the body, the importance of the body that he has given to you. How to live a righteous life. How to present your body. I once listened to a man. Her daughter went out and bought an iPhone. Bought an iPhone and came home. Immediately she bought the iPhone. She bought a cover to cover the iPhone. Was happy. Why? The reason why she bought the cover is to protect the phone, not to destroy. Because the phone was so valuable. Phone is from woman. And you are not going to say, what my phone is saying? Open my eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again in our lives. Our lives. Open our eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. May the Lord open our eyes, our spiritual understanding to know who Jesus is. Understand, my brother, my sister, child of God, that this body that God has given to you is rented to you. One day you give account. And so Paul admonish us through the word of God by beseeching us by the message of God to present this body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. This is our reasonable service. Nobody want to hear. And people, when they hear you preaching the true word of God, nobody want to hear. They want to hear. No wonder the Bible says in this last day people get itchy ears. But what the soul needs is the word that can nullify, nourish the body that you grow. This guy came home and was happy and came to show the phone to her father. And the father asked, what was your reason for covering the phone? He said, because I don't want it to destroy. And the father said, look at you standing there. Your phone is very important, so you have covered it. But the body that God has given to you, you don't have any knowledge to cover it. Preserve it. But you have opened it up for everybody to look. Everybody. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We have, we take more important care of the things that are not valuable. Uh, but in our end time, the body has become something that is, is just uh, nobody regarded. it. But even uh, the, the worldly people are very, very wise than the Christian. No wonder Jesus said the children of this generation, they are wiser than the children of the kingdom. Go and read the Bible. I, I think Matthew 20, verse 8. He said the kingdom of this world, the children of this world, they are wiser. We are a phone in answer. And so when you come into the world, you know you see most of them keeping their bodies, they will have to exercise. They want they don't want to grow, they want to exercise. I every day say that if you don't eat your food as a medicine, one day <laughs> you, you take your medicine as your food. You have to take good care of this body because the body belongs to God. One day we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give accounts. The body as a living sacrifice. Jesus will come one day. And this body that Jesus has given to you, my brother, my sister, you one day give accounts. I remember I was watching a show. I was watching. And a young girl came before the judge and was telling the, the boyfriend has many many was cheating and the boy was crying and was asking 
Why? Why are you cheating on me? Then the girl responded, it's my body. Me, I'm, me, I'm in the bed here. What I want, I, I can use it to. I can use my body for anything. You cannot control me. It's my body. It's my own body. Whoever I want to give, I'll give to. I'll give to. I was an old lady standing there, sitting in the chair and said, this body does not belong to you. Yes, it has been given to you. But if you don't know how to take good care of this body, one day you live to regret. You live to regret. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to start from verse 6. 1 Corinthians 6 and the verse 12 to 20. Our bodies. One. Understand that the body that God has given to you, your body belongs to God. The body belongs to God. Many people are dying. Many are dying. Many are perishing. The Bible says that children of Issachar, they have an understanding. Understood the times. And they know what to do. I pray that you have a purpose in this world. Somebody said that the world does not. In this world, there is no warranties and guarantees. The world that we walk in, there is no warranties and guarantees. There is only opportunities and possibilities. The world has only opportunities and possibilities. And it is there for those who take advantage of it and make good use of it. I was reading a scripture and I was very happy. I read it, Philippians 1, when Paul was in prison. Everything was against Paul. But Paul came back and said that his imprisonment was even for the veterans of the gospel. Minia, Christo niya wu tiemi. Mame, tiemi ye. He, niya botaye wu wia si asasi so na sume uradi ye. Niya botaye. If you don't have a purpose in this life, you will never be motivated. You will never keep your priorities straight. And you never do the will of God. Jesus will come. Our Jesus will come. And he's coming. Everything on earth points towards the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your body belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his property. You don't own it. God does. He created your body. And he expects you to use it the way he intended for you to be used. Somebody say, I don't care. One day you care. The body does not belong to you. It belongs to God. That is why when you go to the cemetery, last Saturday we went to bury a young and a handsome man. And we said, dust go to the dust. Why? Because out of the dust, God created human beings. And we go back. It is certain whether you like it or not. It is certain. I am talking. Your body, a living sacrifice. Paul said by the message of God that we present this body, a living sacrifice. This is our reasonable service unto God. And said so we should not be conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewal of your mind that you prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our oh, Jesus will come. The body does not belong to God. Uh, belongs to you, belongs to God. Let, let's go and read the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. I read from verse 12. Listen to it. Verse, verse 9. I'll come back to verse 9. But let me read from verse 6 and we will understand. Verse 12, he says that all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Everything is lawful, but not everything is lawful. I every day tell people, some people say, A man of God, call me and say that. 
Chenchile, and I'm soon with the idea of Chenchile, and I'm going to say, Go heaven. Because we have turned the Bible the way that it will suit us instead of us turning our life that we can live the word of God. We want, we want to turn the Bible. I told you, I read an article that they said the Haitians and they came together and said they cannot take the Bible out of this world. But one thing they can do, they can uh, loosen the translation. And so there are many translations that if you, if you read, you will not understand it. The NIV have taken many, many important things out of it. And they have translated it, translated it. I pray that you have understanding. He says that we have. All things are lawful, but not everything is expedient. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought, brought under the power of anything. Meat for the belly. And the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. But for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Again the body belongs to God. Your body. This body that God has given to you. <laughs> Today. We make many people don't know. They think that the body belongs to me. The body belongs to me. I remember I was in church and a lady wore a short dress and came to the church. That, you see, until you understand, until you accept Christ as your personal savior, it is not going to church. There are many people who go to church and still don't understand the word of God. There are many men and women preaching the gospel, but they have not repented. They have not repented. There are many of them. And so I every day tell, don't look at the man of God, the woman of God, whose life is opposite to the word of God. One of the things that I have learned coming to the Lord Jesus Christ is living with integrity. When somebody lives, that is one thing that the word of God gives to us. Your words and your life will match. Living with integrity. Every man and woman of God that have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, the words he speaks or she speaks match with his life. Because our Jesus will come. Remember, this body belongs to the Lord. You don't own your body. One day you give accounts. And so you can do whatever you want. I was in the church. When he, in the church of Pentecost. Some of the early women, they are very good. They are very good. One of them came to the... And stood by the lady and told her, This is not good for church. The, the girl got angry. They got God angry. The Bible says that we, everything is good. And you are coming. And so, it says that what goes inside is what defines us, not what comes out. And so you can wear anything to the church. I was just standing and I told the girl, the same Bible says that, the same Bible tells us that the things that go inside, some of them, the thing that are within comes out. And so if within is no good, the outside is no good. You cannot go to the, 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 the concert or the, the club with this. You cannot go to the club. You cannot go. But you, 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 if you cannot, you, you, you cannot. You want to bring this to church. You have not repented. And the girl was looking at me. I said, don't get angry. Except those who have the spirit of God would understand. Hey, And so I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The body belongs to God. And one day we'll give accounts. 
Finally, we just say, walk in this world and do whatever you want. The day that you lay in your bed, then you realize that God has given you opportunity to make good use of the body. The body a living sacrifice. Paul said, I beseech you, my brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. And that the body should be holy. Because one day, you will give accounts. Our Jesus will come. And you, he will sit upon his throne. He says the body for meat. And God has both raised up the Lord and will raise up us by his own power. Meaning that one day God will raise us up. And so if the container is not good, what is it? The container is also not good. Somebody says, oh, at times the container will good. My brother, my sister, listen. Your body belongs to God. Your body belongs to God. And one day you will give accounts. One day you will give accounts. Why? Because, too, Jesus has paid for your body and my body when he died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid for our body. And that is why you have to let it live a holy life. Because one day you give accounts. The body does not belong to you. These days, when you go, go to, I always say that, somebody who says, Sodom and Gomorrah is closer to us than ever. Because it's in our rooms. It's everywhere. Every advert you see, every advert. Recently I was watching America, ABC, that is in America, <laughs> our national television, every state, whether, wherever you are, it's a national television everywhere. American Broadcasting Corporation, ABC. And nowadays, they show how you see lesbianism and gay men kissing men and women kissing men, uh, women. <laughs> my brother, my sisters, there is sodium and gomorrah is in our room. And people don't know. Because we are in the end time. We are in the end time. But nobody, no child of God wants to hear the true word of God. Everybody is rushing for what they will get. They are not ready. I every day will tell you there is no other gospel apart from the gospel of righteousness. To live a holy life. To live a holy life. Go to the meetings. Everywhere is full. Because everybody wants you to tell him. I am going to be rich. I am going to jump over my brother, my sister. Let me be honest to you. Let me be honest to you. There is no greater prophecy than the word of God. The word of God is the biggest prophecy of all. And so when you live a righteous life, go and read Deuteronomy 28. He said when, when, let me go and read Deuteronomy 28. I will read verse 1 and 2. And I'll come back. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. Somebody hear the word of God. He said, and it shall come to pass. If thou will hearken diligently unto my voice, the voice of the Lord. Just, just doing the will of God. Somebody sang a song. That trust and obey. For there is no other way. But to trust and obey. Obey the Lord. That is why. In the Bible. God said. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And to obey. Better than a fat of ramp. And so. God was saying that. When you. No matter the amount of sacrifice. You do. Only if you obey, it is better than. He says that it shall come to pass. If you observe my ways and do all this, that I command you, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord will set you higher above all nations and all these blessings. <laughs> and so it is, yes, declaration is very good. Prayer is very good. But what is important is, is doing the will of God. Live a righteous life. And the church is getting richer and richer. And the, the congregations are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. Because they will tell you. So I challenge God. Now till born free, free, free. Sorry, no calling prayer, no calling prayer. 
Oh, yes, I be Oh, oh, oh yeah, no new bit. The person wanting or oh, wishing for you to prophesy have a, a, a fight with somebody, hate somebody, he's destroying somebody's life. I say, I'm sorry, more say you'll be a brave boy. Would you be cruel? Would you be real? Would you be right Then the same person comes and you prophesy to that person. You are prophesying on the, the dry bones. It's like pouring water on dry bones. There's no life. There's no life. The church is getting rotten because the word of God is not speaking. Nobody speaks the word of God to us. My brother, my sister, there's no other gospel. Live a righteous life. And every day tells you, if you live a righteous life and do the will of God, you don't need any prophecy from any prophet. You don't need it. Yes, God said, he will pour out his spirit in these last days upon all flesh. It is a prophecy that God said it. Yes, that, that, that does not mean it's the same Jesus who also said that false prophets in this last day, false prophets will be everywhere. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. Make it will be more food. Because somebody you call a father in the Lord is a prophet. And they continue to lie, 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 lie. You stand on national TV and you say you are a national prophet and you. you and and say that the wife of the nation president is going to get cancer. Moses Samajne. Moses Samajne. Salifu Abu Akum. Moses Samajne. Moses Samajne. Then you mean you're busy. Moses Samajne. Moses Samajne. No, but but Moses Samajne. No, Mama Christo Sono. The Chief Christo. They are not busted Christian. And God will ask you one day. Somebody will get angry. My brother, my sister, listen. Nathan will walk. Nathan will walk to David's house. Elijah will go to Ahab and tell him what God is saying. They will not come and announce it. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we have the Spirit of God to do the way of God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have the Spirit of God and you are sitting down and you, you, you see them, then the Spirit God will be telling you, I am grieving. I am grieving. Pray in the name of Jesus. Some of us will say it. You say it because we know God and the one that have called us. We will say it, whether you like it or not here. I pray that you hear with a good ear and change and live a righteous life. Many are dying, many are perishing. Many lives are going to the grave without knowing Jesus Christ. And having a good pulpit to preach Christ and, and, and win many souls, they are even leading them to hell. Your body is a living sacrifice. Jesus paid God, Jesus has paid for our body. Again, listen. Jesus paid for our body on the cross. The Bible says, let me go and read Hebrews. Read Hebrews chapter 9. And let me read verse 22. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and verse 22. It says, almost all things are by law pitch, but with that blood, it says that almost all things are pitch by uh, by law with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. If Jesus Christ did had not died, we have no way to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go the same first Corinthians chapter 6. Let me read verse 19. And 20. Verse 16 says, What know ye not that he which join himself with a high lot? For the two becomes one. Verse 19 says, What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are 
bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit, which our God. God's spirit. Jesus paid it. The Bible says he came for his own. By his own receive him not. But as many that receive him, then he gave them power to become children of God. Jesus died and paid for your body. So your righteousness is of God. That is why the Bible says we should present our bodies living, holy and living. This is our reasonable service. My brother, my sister, one day you give accounts of the body that God has given to you. Understand that your body belongs to God. Number two, understand that Jesus Christ died. Because the Bible said, don't you know that this body that God has given you is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God lives in it. And people are destroying the body. Destroying the body, using it for anything. Say, hey, the body belongs to me. I can do anything. I, my brother, my sister, listen to me, a child of God. Hey, God has given you the body. But if you don't use the wisdom, one day you live to regret. As a man of God, I have, I have I, I stood bef behind many beds. Stood behind many beds. And I realized that human beings, we are not them. You stand up, chest up, and walk. We are rainbow one day. Go to the hospitals. See human beings created in the image of God who need a little bit part on their shoulders to live another day. I told you a story about three old men. They were friends, good friends. They were very good friends. Every day they would gather together and smile, eat, and drink. And as the year was they get old. And one day they met again. And one of them said, I don't think next year we will meet. I will be part. The other one said, ah, You are talking about next year. Me, if, if we, next month, if I can live to next month, then I'll praise God. The other one said, You are talking about one month time. I am talking about tomorrow. I don't know if I can live. My brother, my sister, no human being on earth can control his or her next, next breath. Everybody's breath is controlled by God. That is why the Bible says, for it is appointed unto man once to die. And after death, there is judgment. God will judge us. Live a righteous life. I don't know what is holding your life. I don't know what you are walking in. You think your body belongs to you. One day you, one day you render accounts. One day you render accounts. Jesus has paid for you, your, your body. On the cross. He says your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of God was in him. One day. One day. He paid it on, on the cross. He died. The Bible says what manner of love is this? That a man will lay down his life for his friend. If Jesus would lay down his life. Yes, till you hear the word of God. Nobody want to hear the true word of God. Nobody want to hear when you preach Christ, nobody will hear. But Jesus told us that in this last day, many will get itching ears. Oh, they want to hear. Tell us. Remember, I will not come and lie to you and, and tell you things that you'll be happy. I will tell you the true word of God because I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Somebody, somebody will hear it and laugh. You are laughing at yourself. You are laughing at yourself because knowing Jesus is a mystery. Knowing Jesus is a mystery. Not everybody knows. Not every preacher knows that there is heaven. Except you encounter Jesus Christ. He's only here already this year. Number one is Ampa Osoho. So a man, a married man, would cheat, sitting in the church. Then uh, <laughs> recently, uh, a man that called himself a, a push of a, a pastor says, a pastor has to marry three, two. And so he has two wives, greedy and evil, evil in the pulpit, evil in the pulpit. No wonder in Daniel, he said, when you see the abomination that causes remedy, standing in the holy place, let those who have understanding run. Nowadays, say this in the pulpit. 
Sin, everything is in the pulpit. But God will judge sin. We have the judgment of God. Read Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30. God's vengeance is mine. Verse 31 says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. Go and read the Bible. How God was killing in the olden days. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has become a partition. And that he intercedes for us. But the, the vengeance of God, the wrath of God is so strong. Yes, the people are playing with fire. Sit in the church, stand in the church. Look at the church, the, the congregants face and lie to them. God says, and God has not said anything. I pray that they will repent. They don't have heart of human beings. They are evil, some of them. Jesus, Jesus has paid for your body. Let me read it. Talk about the third one. God's spirit lives in your body. The spirit of God lives in your body. Again, Paul said, I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, that we present our bodies, our body, the body that God has been given to you that not belong to you. One day you will grant accounts. So, many, many, many women, they will go to the shops. They always want to keep their body needs. Keep their body needs. Exercising. Buying good perfumes. Buying. Some of them are making plastic surgeries. They want to keep their bodies so that they can use it <laughs> for sexual immorality. I pray that you will understand. One day, this body will go into the dust. Saturday, we want to bury a brother. And every day, every day you hear of it. My brother, one day, a child of God. It is not a fallacy. It is not something that it, does. it is certain. Whether you like it or not. Upo umpo. Verse 19 says that, Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? The body that God has given to you, God's spirit lives in it. And you know the sad aspect of it. That God does not dwell in a sinful place. God doesn't dwell. Some people preach about grace. They say that because of grace, we are in the days of grace. And so you can live anywhere. Who told you? Who told you? The Bible. <laughs> Let me go and read Romans chapter 6. You hear the word of God. He said, what? Shall we then say, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer thereon? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. The likeness as Christ was risen and from dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Walk in righteousness, my brother, my sister. Grace does not lead us to sin. Sin will separate you from God. You will not find where God, <laughs> you will not find any place you find God, you will not find where sin. And so I every day tells you there are many churches God has never been there. You will not see God there. You will not see God there. Most of them, <laughs> in this end time, most of them, they are using familiar spirits, evil spirits. And that is why Jesus, Jesus told us, in Matthew 24, in the verse 24, a child of God, listen to me, be careful. Be careful where you sit. Be careful the hands that people lay on you. Be careful the way you get your teachings. If you don't take care, they will lead you to hell. Jesus said, For there shall arise false Christ. False Christ. People who come, they say they are Christ. False prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders. It's so much that even it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, those that God has elected. <laughs> Woman, what they know, boy, I didn't know what you know. What the book run? Yami, who no more book? Yami, who no more book? Yami, who no more book? Yami, such a woman. Now, then a prophet was standing in the pulpit 
and declare say vice uh, president here abu ratin yame wa mo sachira madre wa mo nya ke sachira wo na mo de mo tra se na mo fonya me wo kwa mo urade asuche be pa mo so mo nie ye mo nie ye we live in Ghana with one one man black sen it uh, every day it started from kumasi they are all from kumasi black sen betani when we were growing, go and see the people. People were jumping. What for? No money idea. They said uh, they come. Why? 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 Why see them? I pray in the name of Jesus. He confessed. Blanks him confessed when he was about to die because he realized. He realized. He realized that it was no good. What the men say? Chira wajere. Men say chira wajere. Now what the yeah? No man will fool you. Let you share with the actually going. To share with the actually going. God bless you, Pastor Comfort Mesa. She's a, she, she knows that we all live in the same area. And we saw Kedi Krono, Bethany. It's everywhere. This man will go to bathroom and people will fight him. Fight him. <laughs> Even the, the water that she's bathing, people will fight him. And people will take the water, some will be drinking. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Buy it and get shell coming here that damn crop from Kabun Grof with you. The Pentecost has sorted them, the Apostles has sorted them, the Matadis has sorted them, the Assemblies of God has sorted them. How did you match? Did you match? Did you match? Did you imagine? You have been taught to how to pray. You have been taught how to pray, but you don't want to pray. You don't want to pray. You have been taught how to study the Bible. Anyway, God, God is delayed. Let me find. There is no shortcut in Christianity. There is no shortcut. I say, live with a purpose and live with the word of God. When you live with a purpose. Purpose in life, you'll be motivated by the word of God. It does not matter what comes in your life. You always look to the cross. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the altar and the finish of our faith, who for the joy set before him and the other cross. Jesus and the other cross. Yeah, no. I, I every day say to myself, if I preach and I get one person to listen, I thank God. I thank God because I know that in this entire world, they don't want to hear the truth. Because Jesus is coming. And Jesus said, it, your body is a living. The spirit of God lives in you. The spirit of God lives in your body. The Bible said, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? He has given unto you. And you receive it from God. One day God will judge us. God will judge the body that he has given to us. He will judge us. And when he comes, my brother, my sister, what accounts are you going to give? What accounts? What are you going to say? First Corinthians chapter 3 and the verse 13 against uh, uh, verse 16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which is you. Only so nipe diya yi nyami asore dai. Nyami wun munti wun. I am talking about the body. A living sacrifice. Living, presenting your body as a living sacrifice. And so somebody can say, I have my body. I use it. I was listening to a young girl. A young girl, an American. She's only 20. And she said, I started selling my body. At, from the age of 11 and if I don't I don't sell myself I don't eat they say your body is for you but one day you give it accounts let me give you and go and research go and research make a research every woman every man that prostitute 
prostitute. No matter the amount of money they get, they die very poor. They die very sad. They die very poor. They die very sad. Their end is very disastrous and disgrace. And so go watch from today onwards. Watch it. Watch the lesbians. Watch the gay. Watch the prostitute and the men and women. Their end is very disastrous. There is no pleasure. There is nothing. There is no pleasure. Hey, when they hear the message of God, they will argue. But they themselves know within their spirit that something is wrong. Except the strength of God, the spirit of God can deliver them from. Except the spirit of God. Nobody is a living sacrifice. Such a wajere. Christ is such a wajere. Mami such a wajere. Nema bufu yen. Kwa kachira usofu. Oke nyami asa minchira u. Oke nyami asa minchira u. <laughs> that we sit in the church and think that we know the word of God, we know everything. You don't know anything. I thank God, me. I always want to learn, me. I thank God, all the men of God that God has called on earth. I am the least. I am the least. That is what, how I see myself. And so every day I want to know more. You know, I want to have a relationship with God more. I catch them up, baby. I thank God. Me, when I go to any place, I just hold my hands. And the men of God will be lifting their shoulders. They lift their shoulders. And everybody is lifting their shoulders. When we have the opportunity to hold the mic or to speak, then you see whom upon whom the Spirit of God dwells. It is the Spirit of God. If they can go to the devil and receive power, what about God? My brother, my sister, understand God's spirit lives in your body. And this body belongs to God. Present it. Uh, it's holy and acceptable unto God. This week, this is the message I have for you. We will talk about the body. And I will talk about three things that God has called us. <laughs> we have been called to absolute submit this body. Three things that we have been called. To submit it, to separate it, and to sanctify the body. To sanctify the body. And I know that by the end of this sermon, somebody, your relationship with God will be more closer. Pray, pray now, and we are in Temunya Pray. Pray now, we are in Temunya Pray. Amen. Pray. So, when you be there, the Bible says, whoever comes to the Lord must deny his or herself, take up his cross. Let me read the scripture and we'll pray. Luke chapter 9 and the verse 23. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, it was Jesus that was saying, If you want to come after me, let him deny himself. Meaning that there are many people, there are many men and women, and there are many in the church, they have not denied themselves. And I always say, God, let this start for me. That I will be able to live a righteous life and do the will of God. God is closer to the broken hearted. The Bible says those who have come to spirit, God will never forsake. So if you have come to the Lord, my brother, my sister, deny yourself. Take up your cross daily and follow the Lord. He said, whoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what man, what is the, uh, it says, for what is a man's advantage if he gains the whole world and loses his, himself? Let's cast away. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory and his Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there be some standing. We shall not taste dead till they see the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming. Let me ask you. What are you using your body for? Do you think you think that the body belongs to you? One. Your body belongs to God. Again, your body belongs to God. Understand it. Two. Understand that Jesus paid for that body. He paid with his blood. And so glorify God. Three, understand that the spirit of God 
lives in you. <laughs> so somebody, the body does not belong to you. You have rented it and one day you give accounts. That is why somebody said you can hire somebody to work for you. You can hire somebody to drive for you. But you cannot hire anybody to carry your disease. <laughs> We are in our course with another boom. And that's what one of my, my daughters called me and said, so for last I was in the hospital. A number of cases that she went at the ER, the emergency in New York. They say that the number of death cases and people that came to me with COVID and everything. You walk on this earth and chest up and think that you, you uh, no, nobody is a human being. May God have mercy on you. May God have mercy on you. I have learned one thing in life to humble myself and serve God faithfully. God bless you. God bless you. Call it cold. He says he's he watching us from Asia. God bless you. God bless you. And may the Lord increase you everywhere that you are. Let's live a righteous life. Because one day Jesus will come. Don't let anybody deceive you. Uh, don't follow them. Follow Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank God for many people praying. But if you pray without knowing Jesus, my brother, my sister, it's empty words. It's empty words. It's empty words. It's like uh, fasting. <laughs> fasting without prayer. You are hunger strike. God bless you. You shared multiple groups. God bless you. God bless you. And those who are watching on the Facebook, can you share for us? God bless you. Uh, cool, Kelly, uh, Kelly Cool. God bless you. Share. Our Jesus will come. We never end our broadcast with that. Before we pray, I want us to pray. But before we pray, let me lead somebody to Christ. Because the Bible says, how can they hear what they have not heard? Except it's been preached to them. And so we preach Christ, nothing but Christ, his birth, his death, and his coming. Me, I will not preach anything about the Lord be without Jesus. I want to preach only Jesus. Paul said to live is Christ and to die is king. All I want to preach is Jesus Christ. I don't want to preach any anything. A man of God called me because you don't have a you don't have a spirit of prophecy that way. I say I don't want to lie to anybody. I don't want to lie. If God, if God gives me a message, and I know it's from the Spirit of God, I'll tell. But I'm not going to say God has not tell me anything. I go, how can, how can, how can I, I enter somebody's village? How can I come and tell somebody the number of his car, or tell the person the the color of his or her underwear? Is it war? It is not prophecy. It is sorcery. It is sorcery. They are evil. That is why they are prophesying. If you have seen something about the wife of the president, go and tell her. You don't stand on national TV because they have challenged you that whoever prophesies, you wanted to say, I pray in the name of Jesus to, for them to repent. They don't have Christ. They don't know Jesus. When they started, we thought they have Christ, but they don't have Jesus. They are evil. They need repentance. Let me lead somebody to Christ Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I, today, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Father, your word says, if anybody be you, he's a new creature. All things are past. Everything has become new. As I've accepted you, may you order my steps until you come. Lord, call me from this earth in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen. I every day tell you, find a church. A church where you hear the message of the cross. Not every church you go, you see Jesus. Not every church you go, you go to heaven. My brother, my sister, hey, don't, don't, don't argue. Because let me be honest to you, there are some churches, it's like a graveyard. And they're pouring water on dead bones. Go to a place where you hear the words, the message of the cross. And within your heart, you have conviction. You, you will not stay, sit in your sin. You see the pastor <coughs> walking in double life. Then you, oh, my pastor, my, my daddy in Christ, he's leading you to hell. I every day tell people, my congregants, <laughs> don't fight for me. Don't fight for me. Nobody, I don't want anybody to fight for me. If you go and they lambasting me, they are insulting me, 
Just listen to it. And if you have seen me in any other way, come and tell me, Papa. All we want you to do, they are, they are insulting you. So if you are in this life, change. Because hey, most of the criticism, some of them are constructive. There is some constructive criticism. Maybe your lifestyle and what you are doing. Not every criticism is evil. Not every one of them is evil. Some of them, the criticism are constructive because these days, men and women of God, our life is contrary to the word that we preach. We don't live the life. I am the number one. Maybe you are not the I example. Come and tell me to live a righteous life. Go to where you hear the cross and you live because whether you like it or not, Jesus is coming. The world will come to an end. It does not what somebody says. Our Jesus, he said that he was going to destroy. In the days of Noah, he did it. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he did it. And it's now he said, it's, as it was in the days of Lord, as it was in the days of Noah, so it's going to be. Yeah, you sit down and say that you are a man of God and you continue to walk in sin. You walk in sin. One day Jesus will come. Find a church. Uh, there are good churches. There are good men and women of God who are looking to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. As in the days of Simon and Anna. They were looking. Go and read the Bible. When you read Luke chapter 2, they were there sitting in the church waiting for the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are some men who are looking for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are ready. It may not be a big church, but Jesus is there. They don't go to a place where they will look at your face and say, you are, you are going to die. A big thing is coming on you. They are all evil. Tell them, I say they are evil. They need to repent. Jesus is coming. If you don't, that's on to them. May the Lord bless you. Let's begin to pray. We want to pray. Open your mouth and thank God. Just thank God with us. Just open your mouth and begin to thank God for your life. Thank God for your brother's life. Thank God that you, God, has given you the privilege to hear the message. How to use your body. You have to live a righteous life. Paul said we should present our bodies as a holy and a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Present our body. The body does not belong to you. It has been rented unto you. One day you give accounts. You give accounts. <laughs> no has become the order of the day. No one. Everybody walk like that. Go to the TikTok. <laughs> Nowadays go. Every woman wants to show her breast. Want to show everything. They buy phones and cover it. But they don't know. They don't have the sense to cover their bodies. Because they, they, they think that they own their body. My brother, my sister, your body belongs to God. God <laughs> owns your body. Jesus paid for and the Spirit of God. The Bible said, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? The Spirit of God lives in it. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Just pray with us. Pray. And thank God. Open your mouth and thank God. We are praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth. You shall not make any cuts on your body. For the dead or tattoo yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19 and verse 20. Even in the old, the God was telling them. That your body. Be careful with your bodies. Because you give accounts, nobody cares. I don't care, it's in my body. One day you do, you will care. The Bible says, they that have yes, let them hear. Be one on a yase. Be one no. Be one on a danyamiase for the word of God. Just thank God for the word of God that has come to you. Father, we thank you, we bless you. We give you praise, we give you glory. We pray in the name of Jesus. That you, Father, your word says, it cometh not in vain, but to fulfill a purpose. Today you have ministered unto us. Live in a, a sacrifice, our body a living sacrifice. To present our bodies. To live a righteous life and a holy life. I hope you have somebody to pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Rokadabushim deribine. Abandaraburun de Riadaba. In the name of Jesus. Rakadabushim deribe. Rakadabu. Hope you have a tongue. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank God. And bless his holy name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A child of God, let's pray this prayer. You ever see a bump by way? You see, many people hear the word of God, but they don't understand. Many people are sitting in the church, but they don't have understanding.
<laughs> Many people, let me go back and call my the radio light have gone off. Trust and no obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Oh, when you walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory shares on our way. While we do His good, we will try to connect back to the radio. He abides with us still. We are always on Evangelist Bright Radio. And with the who will trust, trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way. Be happy in Jesus. But to trust, trust and obey. There are many people they don't have understanding. They don't have an understanding. And so we want to pray. That God help us to understand. <laughs> when you read the Bible, when you read Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, it talks about Ethiopian Enoch who was traveling and God told him to arise and go. When you read Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, read verse 26, and the angel of the Lord speak to Philip, arise and go towards the south. You find an Ethiopian Enoch who is reading reading Isaiah reading Isaiah oh God we're having problems with our lines for the radio let me go back for there is no other way be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he shares on our way. Oh, I will do his good will. And this man was reading Isaiah and did not understand. God told him, Philip, go and help me to understand. There are many, many sitting in the church that they don't understand. They hold the Bible. There are some even preachers they don't understand. Because they preach and they, all they think is that the money that they will get but they don't know that salvation is more important than everything. Because whether they like it or not, Jesus will come. The Lord Jesus Christ. Whether they like it or not, our Jesus will come. Oh, shall we begin to pray? Open your mouth and pray that, Lord, help me to understand your word. We want to understand. We pray for understanding. The Bible says wisdom is a principal thing. In all your getting, get understanding. Many people don't understand. The Bible says the children of Issachar, they understood the times. And because they understood the time, they knew what they ought to do. And because of knowing what they ought to do, their brethren, all their brethren, were at their command. Open your mouth and say, God, help me to understand the times. Understand your word. Help me. Let your spirit help me to understand. We want to pray. Open your mouth and pray with us. We are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody pray with us. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Father, I pray. Help me to understand your word. I want to understand in the name of Jesus. Jesus, somebody open your mouth and pray. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you understanding and illumination of what the word of God. The Bible says it is the Spirit Jesus said that we shall worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says they that are led by the Spirit of God. Pray for the Spirit. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. We we are praying in the name of Jesus. Rokadaba, Rokadabo, Jende Priyadaba. Somebody open your mouth and pray with us. Be one on only a mumpire. Kachira urade, Kachira urade. Say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to understand. I pray, pray in the name of Jesus, my brother, my sister. Pray that you'll understand the gospel. If you don't understand it, somebody will come and preach another message that you believe. If you don't understand it, you will sit in the church and you be led astray and you believe. If you don't have an understanding, anything that comes to you, you will receive.
receive it. If you don't understand it, you open the social media and begin to listen to anything. But if you understand it, you will understand and you'll be led by the Holy Spirit. Pray in the name of Jesus that Holy Ghost help me to understand in this time. In this time, Jesus said, even the elect will be deceived. You don't want to be deceived. You don't want somebody to lead you astray. You don't want somebody to lead you to hell. You don't want somebody to lay an evil hand over you. You don't want to go to an evil place. The Bible says, blesses the man who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the ways of uh, uh, sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, they meditate upon day and night. And them open your mouth and say, Lord, I want to be someone that I meditate upon your word. I want to be someone that I will live in your word. I want to be someone that I will walk with your word. I want to be as a walking testimony. The Bible says, Paul said, we are the epistles. We are the epistles. The people read. We are the light of this world that shine unto people, leading them unto Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Help me to understand. Father, we pray. We pray for divine understanding. We pray that we will understand. Somebody open your mouth. Be one on a vampire and begin to ask God that God, I want to live a righteous life. I want to do your will. I want to be the first messenger. When you come in your glory, my brother, my sister, the Bible says the trumpet of the Lord will sound and the Lord God, the Lord will descend from his glory and the dead in Christ will rise and those who are alive will be caught up and when Jesus will one day come and he's coming, he has his reward. Pray that you'll understand. Pray that you'll understand. It is not a lie. It is not a lie. It is truth and it's certain. It is the true word of God that one day our Jesus will come. Ronde kada bojen de ribi de priyadama e papa ndeze opio ma fe pray in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus raka de bojen de priyadama e papa ndi kandorobo ronde priyadama somebody opio ma fe pray opio ma fe pray in the name of Jesus e bande re bo ronde priyakada ba ronde de ribi de priyada bojen de ribi e papa ndi re bo ronda priyadama. For there is no other way be happy in Jesus but to trust, trust and obey when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. Oh, what a glory He shares on our way while we do His good will, He abides with us. Uh, and we know who will trust, trust and obey, trust and obey, for there is no other way, be happy in Jesus, but to trust, Paul admonish us through the word and through the Holy Spirit, that we should present our bodies a living sacrifice, we want to pray, we want to pray, I don't know how you honor God with your body. I don't know how you honor God with your body. There are some people, they are selling men and women. Their nakedness and everything. They don't care. They think that it belongs to them. My brother, a child of God, listen to me. One day, one day, one day, one great faithful day, you stand before the judge it. Somebody say, I don't believe it. You sit down. Sit down and give excuses. Answer yourself. <laughs> it is not a lie. It is certain that our Jesus will come. We want to pray that God help me to honor you with my body. God help me to honor you. Your body belongs to God. Jesus paid for your body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God lives in that body. You have to glorify God. The Bible says whoever destroyed the body, God will destroy. God will destroy. God will destroy. Open your mouth and begin to pray that God help me to honor you with my body. Just open your mouth. We buy phones and we cover them. We buy uh, and we cover everything. 
But we have left the body, the precious body. A body that God has given to us. Everywhere have people are selling their bodies. Nowadays, it's very sad. Go to the social media. You open it. And uh, women, uh, all they want to do is change their bodies. I pray in the name of Jesus. And the woman, the woman, an old woman told a young girl, look at me. That body that you have. One day, <laughs> that nobody will even want to look at it. Nobody. 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 I told the woman. That, I told her. I said, women are blessed. God has given women something that is more precious to every man on this earth. But if you're a woman and you don't have this wisdom and knowledge, if you don't have wisdom and knowledge, the thing that God has given to you that is precious, it will become a debt unto you. It will lead you. Many women are living in regret. Many women are living because they do not apply the wisdom of God to life. They do not apply wisdom. The thing that uh, if you have money come, I'll give you everything. It is, it is for money. It is not on sale. The thing that God has given to you is spiritual. It is spirit. I every day tell people that sex is spirit. And if you don't know, it, it has destroyed many. It has destroyed and it will destroy everyone that you have with. You have exchanged your spirit. You have exchanged your spirit. And the person's spirit will live with you forever. I told them. It is understanding the word of God. That is why the Bible says beginning of wisdom is the fearing of God. Knowing the who Jesus is. I pray that you know. Open your mouth and say, God, help me. Help me that I will honor you with my body. Help me to live a righteous life. Help me to know. And leave it. God gave it to you for a purpose. God gave your body to you. Man or woman. God gave it to you. Somebody said, I don't care. You want to care. You want to care. <laughs> as the days go by. And as, as it go by. <laughs> one day you render accounts. What you did with your body. The Bible says, blessed are they that die in the Lord. They will rest from their labor. And their deeds, their works will follow them. It will follow you. You are given accounts. Open your mouth and ask God. God help me to know you. Papa, I want to know you. I want to know you. Somebody ask God that you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is coming. Our Jesus is coming. Let's live a righteous life. Open your mouth that God help me to live this life. And honor you with my body. Because my body belongs to God. My body belongs to God. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body. Open your mouth. Jesus is coming. Your body belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's honor God with our body. Body. Honor God. That body you give accounts. Don't think that it belongs to you. It belongs to Jesus. Your body belongs to God. That is why when you die, you don't go, you leave it. And you give accounts. Open your mouth and say, Father, today after as I've heard your word, I pray that you, your spirit will help me to live a righteous life. Live and present this body a living sacrifice. Sacrifice is a, a something that is done in place to receive something. That you offer your body so that you receive the kingdom of God. You receive heaven. Use your body to be a tool that will open the heavens unto you. That will lead you closer to God. Live a righteous life. Live a righteous life. Live a righteous life. Our Jesus will come. And he's coming. We always stand. Pray. I don't know what what you are going through. I don't know the difficulties. I don't know the barriers. But we are praying that God remove every barrier. Remove every burden. Everything that is holding your life. That you cannot present your body a living sacrifice. We pray with you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you. May the Lord God help you. That you'll be able to live a righteous life. You'll be able, my brother, my sister, a pastor, a prophet that is listening to me. Our greatest commander did is to live a righteous life. Is to present his body a living sacrifice. That is our prayer for everybody. Everyone has been called that we will live a righteous life. Your body a living sacrifice. Live it. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me. That we present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Jesus is coming. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. Anytime you come, share.
share that somebody will listen to the word of God through word of God somebody will find Christ it is our prayer that will every day that will every day of our life every day when I get out from here that I go to work that God will help me to lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ that is all I pray for that is all my joy is to win so that is my joy in life that to win so for the Lord Jesus Christ Somebody told me that pastor, pastor, uh, uh, these days everybody is a pastor. You don't know the way we encounter Jesus. If you know the way I encounter Jesus, then you know that some of us, we have not come. We don't preach because of anything. From here I'm going to work. And I go and I come back. I come back. And I get on the prayer line. I get on the prayer line. I pray in the night. And I pray. I come on the radio 24 hours. We've been doing the word of God, work of God, and preaching everywhere. Greetings to you, Papa. I said, Papa, God bless you all. Let me thank some people. God bless you, Eric White. God bless you. So for, let me thank my big sister. My big sister is always watching me. Sister Adelaide, God bless you. I love you, sister, for always standing with us. It's a prayer that every heart desire God will meet for you. And also my twin brother, always standing with me. There are many people, uh, thank God bless you. Uh, cool, uh, coolly cool, God bless you for also sharing. He says that he's watching all the way from Asia. And also my Miss Taylor Chairman, God bless you. Oh, Pastor Comfort Mensa, oh my God. A classmate. And we also live in the same, we're all in the same school. It's like we, we went through the education, through the, the secondary level together. Pastor, comfort, master, God bless you. God bless you, man of God. And let me see if I can see the more names. Uh, uh, sorry, forgive me if the names are not coming. And so if I don't mention your name, it's not that I don't want to, but the names are not coming. God bless you, Stella. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. In the middle of tomorrow, we are going to continue this week. The first some weeks, I was not feeling fine. That's why you don't, you don't hear of me. But this week, we have started. And we are going to preach Christ. Help me to preach Christ. Help me to preach Christ. Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. All I preach is Christ. I'll preach only Jesus Christ. And his death is coming. Share the message and let somebody hear. I know that no, many people don't want to hear. I will not come and prophesy. If you want, pro if you want prophecies for them to prophesy to you, go. You see, they are, they are there. They are ready to to leave you, lead you, and kill your life. They are all evil. It started uh, the first person me when I was growing. I saw, I saw Blankson. So Blankson, I saw it. My big sister will tell you. My sister Adelaide will tell you. You go there. Tell for me they saw the much in the from but there is an end to everything. There is an end. God will show mama catch from the sofa attack around this woman such a If they they were wise, they would have learned from a precocious life. And the sofa boy they will learn from them and change. But the sad as I told somebody, they cannot repent because they have sold their spirit to the devil, and they own the devil. Who is going to deliver them? Who is going to deliver them? And they, they, they feel shallow to come out and tell the truth because they have uh, deceived people and amount wealth. And they are living in their life. God bless you all. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Love you all. Share the message with us. Meet at the same time. Ciao.